Welcome to this presentation on the Family Search mobile app. In this on the go world we live in, at least when we are not plagued by a pandemic, the Family Search mobile app makes it possible to have our family history information with us wherever we go. Waiting at the doctors or dentists, riding a bus or train, we can be adding sources, searching for historical records or reserving temple work. Being a baby boomer, I would not normally pull out my smartphone to do family history. Hands down, I would choose my laptop for all my genealogy needs. But I must confess there are some great features on the Family Search mobile app that I prefer over the desktop version of Family Search. As a preface to this presentation, I want to point out that I am using the Android platform to show the features of the Family Search app. The iOS platform is much the same and for some features is more seamless than the Android version. For this presentation, I will not be instructing on how to find and install the Family Search app. On this front page is the Family Search tree icon that you will look for as you search for the app. So, let's dig in. When you first open the app, you will see this pedigree screen. This should look familiar and comfortable. The pedigree view can be expanded by tapping the arrows above each set of great grandparents. Many of us have got used to the fan chart view. You can choose either the pedigree view or the fan chart view as your main screen. If you prefer the fan chart view as your main screen, you will need to tap the three bars on the top left hand corner of the screen. This main menu will appear. From the main menu, tap on Settings. You will see a screen that looks like this. You will need to tap on App. Another screen will appear and at the top there will be an option to enable the fan chart view. Tap the filter button to the right and this will change the pedigree view to the fan chart view. You can decide how many generations you want to see on the fan chart view. Four generations fits very nicely on the screen, but as you increase the amount of generations you will not be able to see the entire fan chart on the screen, but you can drag it from one side to the other. Whilst on the fan chart view, if you tap the filter button on the bottom right, an interactive view of the fan chart will appear, much like the one that you see on Family Search on the computer. Here, using the drop down button is where you choose if you want to see four, five, six, or seven generations. Much like the computer version of Family Search Family Tree, you can choose a color coded view of the birth country, sources, stories, photos, research helps, and ordinances. Because these screens are very much like the ones on the computer version of Family Search Family Tree, I am only showing two screens here. Going back to the main chart, fan chart view, if you tap an ancestor on the fan chart, it will take you to their person page. If you long press an ancestor's name on the fan chart, it will bring up this menu. To help follow each menu item when there is a menu, I have sandwiched it between screenshots. For this menu, first you can view your relationship as seen on the screen on the right. View this tree will show you your ancestor on the main position on the fan chart. View details shows that ancestor on their person page. By tapping open in new screen, you have the option of seeing multiple screens at the same time. But first you must enable multiple screens. This is done by going as we did before to settings, app, and at the bottom enabling multiple screens. Multiple screens can be especially useful when you want to go between screens quickly. The iOS version for multiple screens is a little more user friendly 
than the multiple screens on the Android platform. To add another screen, you will need to be on the page you want to add. Then click the multiple screens icon on the top of the screen. This icon is not available on all screens. On the right, you can see I have multiple screens open. One is the fan chart, one is memories, and the other is the person page. You can have up to five different screens active at the same time. Now let's explore the person page in more detail. Personally, I find it a lot easier to maneuver than the computer version of Family Search Family Tree. As you can see, toward the top of the person page are menu items. The default details page shows the vital information on the individual. Tapping on any of the vital information which lists a place will take you to a location in a Google Maps clip. Tapping on the map will in turn take you to all locations that are linked with the vital information. These maps are only available on the details screen. You can drill down to see the location of each event for that individual. Spouses shows the spouses and the children. The next heading shows the parents and siblings of the individual. Note that on both screens as well as others, the plus icon means information can be added. On all these screens, remember to scroll down if you want to see all the information. Next is a listing of the sources. Tapping on a source will bring up the source details. Here you can see the memories that are attached to this individual. Tapping a photo will enlarge it. By tapping on the plus sign in Memories, you can add a photo, story, document or audio. This can be done on the spot by taking a photo, writing a story or making a recording, or alternatively finding a file on your phone or on the cloud. The heading listed as Charts produces PDF downloads for the various charts available. You can download them to your phone as PDF documents and then transfer them or use them as you would like. The last heading on the person page menu is ordinances, showing when temple ordinances were completed for that person and if any are pending or necessary. I also want to point out the icons at the top of the screen. The three bars on the left and the multiple screen icon we have already looked at. The next icon in the form of a person with a shadow behind it brings up the list of recents, the last 50 people you have looked at, just like you would find on Family Search Family Tree on the computer. The final icon, the three dots, which hopefully look familiar from other applications, will bring up yet another menu. Find opens a screen where you can find a person by their name or by their PID number. View my relationship is the same as we have seen before. Search records brings up the search historical records option. The next option is one of my favorite features of the Family Search app, Descendants with Tasks. You can choose an ancestor and tap Descendants with Tasks and it will bring up record hints you can add and possible temple work that needs to be done for the descendants of just that ancestor. You can decide how many generations you want to look at. Much easier to find than on the computer. By tapping on the three decreasing filter bars on the right, you can filter your tasks by all, just temple, or just hints. Also notice that this screen is one where the multiple screen icon is available, so you could add this as one of your five screens. View this tree, as we saw earlier in the presentation from a different menu, will show the selected person in the main position on the fan chart. Possible duplicates will check for duplicates for the person you are currently looking at. As you can see on the left, I have a possible duplicate for Johann Andreas Wernicke. 
Notice on the Family Tree app, there is a star rating for the match quality. This is not available on Family Search Family Tree on the computer. This particular match is rated as four stars. I reviewed the merge on the phone, but having done a lot of merging, I was a little skeptical and I did not feel confident that I could do the necessary background research on the phone. So I decided to get on the computer and explore this duplicate more carefully. After careful examination of the original document, which in all honesty I could have done on the phone, it was evident that this was definitely not a match. This is one feature on the app that I will probably never use. In my opinion, merging is too complex to do in a phone environment. It would be too easy to do a bad merge. If you want to share a person with a family member, for example, tap Share Person and you will get a list of apps you can use to share the information. Here is how it looks if you shared the information in a text. Following indicates that you are following this person so that if changes are made, you will be notified. If the menu says follow instead of following, then you can tap that to add that person to your following list. Download memories. This will download all photos, stories, documents and audio files for the person. Once these memories are downloaded, you can view them on the go, even without an internet connection. Recent changes is the same as latest changes on Family Search Family Tree. This is often called the change log and shows all changes made to a person, along with reason statements. Delete person states, you do not have sufficient rights to delete this person. You may submit a support request by visiting familysearch.org. We will now return to the main menu, which is accessed from the hamburger button in the top left hand corner of many of the screens. Tasks list 25 tasks for all ancestors that can be worked on. Again, using the filter button on the right, you can filter for all tasks, just temple tasks, or just hints. Temple shows you your reservation list. Using the filter icon on the top right, you can filter by the specific types of ordinances you wish to see. I'm sure most of you are aware of relatives around me. Hopefully it won't be long before we can meet in groups where we can use this feature again. Map My Ancestors is a great tool to see where your ancestors come from. Tap on one of the circles with numbers to drill down further. And further. You can keep tapping in the same manner until you get to a specific ancestor with a specific event. Improve place names is a volunteer opportunity to help fi fix place names and standardize them, just like the one on the home page at familysearch.org. My Contributions, which is now also on familysearch.org, was a feature introduced on the Family Tree mobile app and then incorporated into the computer version of Family Search. The stats show your contributions to Family Search. You can view the stats by all contributions or the number of sources, memories, or persons you have added. My Contributions also shows changes you have made on Family Search. Like Recents, this is an easy way to return to some of the family members you are working with. But unlike Recents, which lists the last 50 people, Changes lists the last 300. FamilySearch.org on the computer seems to have more than the last 300, although I must admit I haven't counted. Private Persons lists those individuals in your tree that you have designated as living. It is good to check this list occasionally so you can add information if a death occurs. You can get ideas for family history activities from the next menu item and from the next also check your messages and notifications. Memories actually takes you to the separate Memories app where you can see all photos, stories, documents and audio files 
added by you to your family search family tree. Because of time constraints, I will not go into detail on the Memories app here. That could be a whole other training. But know that you can filter your search by just photos, stories, documents, or audio, and that the app has a menu of its own, accessed by the three bars in the top left of the screen. From screens, you can see which screens are active on the app. Other than settings and help, we have looked at all the features of the Family Search mobile app. Hopefully, you will take the opportunity to explore those last two menu items on your own, as well as revisit some of the other features we have discussed today. If you would like more information on the Family Tree mobile app, here are two presentations that may be helpful. Family Search App for Intermediate Advanced Users by Todd Powell and Family Search Mobile App, an overview of cool genealogy features to try by Devon Noel Lee. I hope you will enjoy using the Family Tree Mobile App. Have a great day.